I think really that it's not too much to say that in the course of the ratification debate and in the course of his congressional race, Masson, who had initially wanted to give Congress a virtually unlimited veto over state governments, was born again as what we might call a strict constructionist. He was convinced that the Articles of Confederation had to be replaced with something stronger, but he was faced with a public that feared the Constitution gave the new government too much power. So he tempered his views to reflect public opinion. And in a Republican system, after all, governments derive their legitimacy from the consent of the governed. Masson, I think, came naturally to believe that the Constitution should be interpreted to reflect what he would call the genius of the people, or public opinion. And anchoring the Constitution uh, to the intent of the founding generation would also give the new government a measure of stability. And Masson valued stability because he knew that Republican governments had historically been criticized most often for their instability. So in the first session of the new Congress, he, he, he introduces this, this, this series of amendments, partly to, to honor his campaign promise to Baptist voters in his district, partly to, to, to placate some of the more moderate anti-federalists. But I think, above all, to prevent a second constitutional convention um, and to prevent the adoption of more radical amendments that would unduly weaken the new federal government. 